content. We're back, everybody. We just watched the first four episodes of ReZero, uh, the first season. Yeah. Again, for me, but you are watching this for the first time. You'd only seen the first episode before. This is my first time watching past episode one, which we covered years ago on seasonal wrap up whatever it was called Weebcast, back in the day yeah. weebcast the old yes. weebcast and i covered the first season on the plebe and the weave with mm. endless jess but we kind of just did the whole show in in a 45 minute block similar to this one now we're going to go through back with a fine tooth comb because mm. this is the most popular show the second season is currently airing in order to get there we have to get through the first and uh there's a third season coming in january for us to be buttered up and ready for we will cover whatever is the most popular and no one can stop us no. this is the purpose of content go to our subscribe star to show us that that's what you care about yeah. and i'll be curious uh because my reaction to these first uh four episodes is i mean i more or less remembered them exactly like as they are yeah. but i did get a bit more out of it this time i will say that i i don't know if enjoyed is the word i would use but i understood what i was watching a little bit more there so, is some enjoyment to be found in this show for sure yeah. i can understand why it was the most popular show like of 2016 or whatever i get it there's nuance to it which i'm interested to go into yeah it's it's a show that like it definitely has a point that it's trying to make in terms of like uh, the attitude of the main character, the way that the story handles him. And, uh, you know, from an early point on, it's like the premise of this show is that the main character continually dies and is wakes up at certain like save points, basically. Yeah. So uh, as he, he, he comes to another world, every time he dies, he wakes up somewhere he was before and he has to figure out how do I resolve the situation in such a way that I will not die by this time frame you mm, know mm. um because it, it's also possible i don't even know if he necessarily has to die it was a bit confusing because in episode five uh he just kind of goes to bed and then that was episode up four the four, end of episode yes. four but no. he just kind of i always forget episode one is double length so in my right, mind yeah. it's four uh episodes for the first arc but like yeah he he just kind of goes to bed wakes up. i don't remember if he got killed in his sleep or well, if this is something different I, but. I haven't seen so i have no idea I, I i right now because of that i'm not sure if the rules are it's a death thing or there's some larger right. magic for all i know that could have been a gimmick of the first couple episodes yeah. from what i've heard in my in my travels i'm pretty sure it's tied to death mostly so yeah. i'm expecting that I, I would i would definitely say that it's mostly like a save point kind of metaphor it's like he gets to certain mm. points in the mm. journey and then he will keep receiving setting to that point so it's like you know it, it's in a way kind of like how in groundhog day which mm. of course is the go-to um time yeah. loop story and a masterpiece for the ages absolutely in that he has to basically relive the same day until he fixes everyone's day like mm. in in the beginning he's somebody who makes everybody have a bad day by the end he makes everybody have a good day basically and then he yeah. finally gets out of the time loop uh in re-zero it's sort of more like if he can save all the key figures, you know, and himself, like, as long as he, like, cause eventually we'll get to a point where he's going to start using death strategically. Um, so it's sort of like, okay, can I make it through this with all the people I want alive on, uh, you know, make it to the other side? Uh, because if I go too far, you know, if I pass a save point again and I, and everybody's dead, then I would have to, you know, Watch, watching this this far, my initial questions about the mechanics are, yeah, because because we see a reset to a different starting point in episode four at the very end, and I'm, gl I'm glad we, we were thinking of stopping after episode three, because at the end of the first arc, I'm glad we kept going, because it raises questions about, uh, like, what makes that save point update, or, I mean, theoretically, is it even death? How did he die? I I'm just going to assume that it's death involved with all that right. stuff. What makes it be, like, a new thing? Is is it that every single day he has that one day, and if he makes it past midnight alive or whatever, then things will reset? Because you were saying, see, Groundhog's Day is an interesting comparison, and the mechanic, you have to really explain the mechanics long term for a show like this to make sense. Mm -hmm. Because in Groundhog's Day, you know, interestingly, um, when they were making that movie, there originally was a clear stated reason why that there was a time loop, uh, I mean, I'm a big fan. I've done research. I've watched that movie a million times, which was that uh, Bill Murray's girlfriend was supposed to be a character at the beginning, and she 
literally casts like a gypsy curse on I Bill see. Murray at the beginning. They cut that and made it totally detached from anything, right. and which was obviously the right decision. I suspect that things will get more like grounded in video game mechanics or at least some logic behind it. But but in Groundhog's Day. The guy has to, like, this is why people compare it to the Buddhist cycle of rebirthing, because he has to basically obtain enlightenment right. in order to move on with his life. But in this show, uh, like, uh, you know, what if he had made it past that day, but a couple of characters had died? Right. Would they be permadeathed, or is it, a, is it Groundhog's Day, you need to obtain certain flags to get past it, or is it just every 24 hours you hit a new the, save point? Will, I don't know. These I don't will know. be relevant questions that the characters yeah. will have to seek the answers to themselves, I think. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the... The, the thing about this show is it, it definitely has a lot of, like, background mysteries that it is holding off for, like, the long game. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. it, right from the beginning, we're learning things about, like, Amelia's uh, connection to the witch or whatever. Satella, Satella. the witch. Of yeah, bitch. like, that will start to come in later, like, into the first season, but you're not going to get any answers about that yet. So it's, like, there's definitely a lot of stuff in this early part that's just, like, set up mystery get your noggin jogging get you ooh what are all these names what are all these things personally i've never been a big fan of that kind of storytelling because i have a tendency to not really register details until they become relevant it's like if you say like oh satella the witch whatever and i will just forget that that ever happened and then later on they'll introduce a character and somebody will tell me, oh yeah, they mentioned her back in episode one. And I'm like, oh, they did? I have the I opposite problem <laughs> because I pay too much attention and I generally am let down by the opposite side of the coin, yeah. which is that mysteries are set up and I, in my in my thinking ahead, fanny way of, of rationalizing right. and expecting explanation, I'm expecting every mystery set up to be answered in a clear, I, I don't even need clear answers. I just right. need an answer. Yeah. And I am so often, because I skew that way, I'm usually let down yeah. by stories as opposed to pleasantly surprised. I, I think in my case, it's more like if I don't have the answer, I will just assume what I think it probably is yeah. and be completely satisfied with that. It's just like, that's the oh, two different ways we, we come at there's it. There's like a witch thing. Yeah, it's probably like this, you know, not to say that I'm satisfied with the show, just that like, yeah, I'm yeah. able to move on because like I, I don't care enough about these. I wish I know. had more of that in <laughs> yeah. me. I don't. <laughs> Again, with that, though, when, when the dialogue has so much of it, it gets very easy for me to just, like, zone out and not care anymore and be like, ugh, this is fucking boring. Which, like, the first episode of ReZero, the the conversation between Subaru and Amelia that, like, lasts from when she saves him from the thugs up until his first death is just un fucking believably long they just like and there's stand a few there of those yeah and talk for like 10 15 minutes it felt like and there are there are moments when even in those scenes uh, like uh, even during combat situations i we were remarking on this and we can uh, this, this ties into a larger point but the combat is cool the animation is good people cared about making this anime people put effort and time into it but I don't know if it's held back by being a light novel. They feel the need to include every piece of text that was like written down because even the fights where I'm enjoying the action, what's actually going on, they're still f like fluffing out the, the the actual dialogue of what's going on when I would just prefer silence. Yeah. They're, they're talking and talking and telling me how to feel verbally yeah. when I can more than infer it from what the fuck is going on. So that's, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's the biggest thing that you and I are going to feel with this show is that it is it really feels like it's beating you over the head and yes and there's saying, a reason for that which yeah. i wanted to talk about which i i was saying we were both reflecting on this that mm -hmm. i think and i think in your plebe in the weave jesse you said talked about yeah. this too i feel when i watch this show knowing how popular this series is like uh, you know you, you put out like a, a made in abyss or something and i feel challenged mm -hmm. like both emotionally with how fucked up it is and intellectually and you know maybe not all my questions will be answered but many are but with this show it's the opposite i'm thinking way far ahead of everything that's going on right. because i have so much meta i, I don't want to use expertise meta experience with like yeah. what they're planning time loop stuff time travel like what the setups of each of these characters are going to be even if i'm not right yeah. It still feels like I know what's going to happen all the well, time. And a lot of the time the show really just like does the, the brand of subversion, which is just do the opposite of what I told you I was going to do. Where Perfect like, example, e episode two, the door opens slowly and you're all like, oh, this is when the evil lady shows up. I mean, to, to, to you and I, I think we just know 
there's zero chance that it's the obvious thing. It's good. Yeah. And like, cause and you think back, oh, they put all these setups as to all these other characters it could be. I might not know exactly who it's gonna be. In this case, it was Amelia or whatever, sure. but you know it's not what the tension is building towards. So when the tension is cut in that supposed to be dramatic way, I'm just sitting there thinking this, this whole sequence was a waste of my time right. because I didn't, I knew what was coming. I knew right. what they were planning. And that's what I think there's a little bit too too much of in this show is like the the meta textual like him constantly talking about the flags that are set up and all that. Yeah. And on yeah. some level, I appreciate it because people have talked a lot about this show as like a, a deconstruction or subversion. There's of, the word of uh, of of the tropes of isekai. Because he shows up in this world, and his expectation is that he's going to be super powerful, but he's actually a a complete pushover. You know, like he's basically, yeah, yeah. if not for his death loop power, he's basically nothing in this world. He is stronger than a normal person because mm. he trains in his room as a neat. But for he, some reason that I hope that they address, because that's weird, yeah. that's unusual. Well, it's because he he feels the need to be the protector of his household. So, but he, most neats don't feel that way. So no. I, I don't know. He's, I, I I will say Subaru is a he's a somewhat interesting character to me, in a way that when I first watched the show, my read on him was just kind of like, well, he's just a neat otaku, like worthless dipshit kind of guy. There is a bit more to him than that. Yeah, because saw. he is actually like he's very willing to throw himself into danger to help people instantly no hesitation he doesn't have very strong reactions to things like in general like something bad will happen and he'll just kind of like as soon as he understands it he's over it and he's just like ready to move forward and he like yeah uh, there's a moment where uh felt says something to him like you were just cowering you were just saying to run away a second ago and now you're saying like you know, now you're all confident, and he's like, "Well, you know, I the information changed." So, yeah, yeah, it, it gave me the sense. I, I think that in many ways, this show is a metaphor for living with autism and possibly. There it is, folks. By, how how what's the clock? Disorder. Clock the time on the dial. Okay, yeah. all right. My argument. I mean, being, in a sense, I see what you're saying, yeah. but it's just that that kind of applies to all anime. It does. <laughs> yeah. But this one in particular is because of the fact that I, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but in in with autistic people, there's this concept of them getting stuck, that like mm. they can't move past something because it's like the logic of it shift like. It's kind of like when you think you're going to, let's say you're in the car and you, you've you been told you're going to like Taco Bell and then all of a sudden the person driving takes you to Wendy's and you're like, why did this change? This is a problem. You know? This is an right. issue that must be solved. Right. Well, yeah. you just need an answer. You need yeah. to know why, you know? And like, if you don't get a satisfying answer, then you're just going to keep thinking about it and be like, well, why? Like, why did this happen? You know, like it's this like need to fully grasp something before you can move on. And it's not that you literally do need to have like a fully robust understanding. You just need to think you do. You need to be told enough to move on, you know? Yeah, sure. And so like with Subaru, he is like, he's cringy. Like, he's deliberately cringy. The way they write him is he just kind of, like, says whatever comes into his head. That's crystal clear. That's he's intentional. constantly yeah. saying, like, anime references. He's constantly saying things that other people just don't understand. They make fun of him. They will beat him up for the things he does. Like, he is just generally a spurg, you know? And everybody's like, shut the fuck up, you weird, dumb asshole. Until he's just through sheer determination is able to, to, to you know, progress the situation. But, like... Also, the fact that he has all this info that he knows that none of them know that like because another thing about autistic people is that they have a really difficult time bridging the gap between things they know and things other people know. So it's, it's hard for them to like interpret what you are thinking, you know, uh, without you explicitly telling them and then they'll just take what you say at face value, you know. Sure. So like sure. Subaru in this show is somebody who. He's learning all this stuff, and then he comes back, and then he just says that stuff because he, like, can't put himself in the mindset of the other people don't know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't matter. He's, like, just push through it. Just keep talking, like, whatever. Like, he's he's somebody who, I guess, has internalized the idea that he is dumb. Like, he thinks of himself as, like, I am not smart. I just am... I, my only skill is I am, like, crazy determined, and I will continue to get back up, you know? And he's sort of, like beats up on himself a lot and just like he's a he's a character that I, I find interesting in that he seems like 
like he doesn't really value himself except in that he can help other people. That seems to be you true. Know? I suspect childhood trauma, dead parents. Right. He had to like the fact that he protects his house because his parents aren't there to do so or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. There's Maybe he is raped by Jeffrey Epstein as a child. <laughs> But yeah, like, he he just generally seems to have this this idea of, like, um, and, like, the reason he, he goes after Amelia specifically, like, to help her is that, like, he sees her as somebody who is constantly taking time out to help somebody else. Yeah. And yeah. there's sort of an undercurrent in this uh, show of the idea that people don't have time to help you. That, like, the main character is slow, he needs help, he needs advice, but everybody around him is doing something important. Like, they have a purpose. Amelia is, like, trying to get her thing back. Felt is like, I have to survive in the gutter. You know, uh, everybody has, like, a job. Even the normal shopkeepers, they are yeah. actively like, I'm running my stall, I don't have time for this shit. Exactly. And even the... Welcome to real life, kids. Even, well, and the, the most fascinating to me is the, the disemboweler, what's her name? Uh, uh, that is, uh, no, what, I've got it, I've got it. Elsa the Bowel Hunter. The Bowel Hunter. The Bowel Hunter. The Incredible. The Bowel Hunter is, was <laughs> actually, so the first time we watched the show, I had totally ragged on this character and thought she was shit because I was just like, oh, edgy fucking, edgy big titted, you know, vixen or whatever. Yeah. This time I was actually a lot more interested in her because of her dialogue and like paying attention to exactly what she says. Cause whoa, whoa, whoa! You're telling me if you pay attention to a show, <laughs> you can get more out of it? This is a revelation. Well, particularly like, cause okay, the first time I also hate her voice because she just has like it's just like the most generic, edgy like. I've heard that voice a thousand character. times. Yeah. Possibly that specific voice actress, right. for all I know. Yeah. So like, it just I was so annoyed by the presentation of the character the first time that I really was not like giving as much thought to like what she's actually saying because it sounds like just a bunch of edgy banter basically. Yeah. But like, there's these these odd. There's one really great moment I think where. Uh, in one of Subaru's time loops, he runs into her on the street before going, like, before she would have normally killed him. And she basically says something to him, like, advice. She's like, you're actually pretty good. If you could, like, numb your, uh, killer intent, you would be great, you know? And then yeah, she, like, yeah. fucks off. All throughout the fights that she has with the other characters, she keeps talking about, like, their skill or, like, almost, like, wishing they were stronger. Like, she, I get the sense she wants to be beaten, like, she wants to be killed, she's, like, really elated to fight the knight to get to, like, she wants him to draw his sword, his special sword to, to fight her with, she's, like, looks at peace when he launches his big final attack, so it's, like, this woman is a, a sadomasochist, she wants somebody to beat her ass, but she's too strong. So, True. She's very low self-esteem this right. whole time. Yeah. And yeah. she she talks she she says something about how like this is the only thing she can do. She's only good at cutting bowels, cutting bellies, you know. Um, and she says something about how jealous she is of Felt for being like uh, she says the world loves you. Yeah, you're you're loved by the world, Felt. I'm so right. jealous of that. I get the sense of like cursed. Embraced by darkness, raised yeah. by evil people. Which was, well, I kind of think she might be redeemable. I don't know if she shows up right. or anything, but uh, it, it's a. If the world was kind to her, she would be kind yeah. to the world. But she wasn't born into that or whatever. I definitely think the the cycle of abuse is a is a theme in this show. And and thus we return to Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. So, so when I look at the deeper themes of the show on that level, it's like so we've got this this villain who is talking about how. She's jealous of the other characters. Well, the main villain, the main background villain, is the Witch of Envy. Satella, yes. Yeah, so Envy, this woman is envious of them. Mm, There's a lot true. of jealousy going on. Like, Felt is jealous of rich people because she's from the gutter. When the when she's fighting the, the bad guy, she continually tells Felt, like, oh, you're just gutter trash. Like, that's all you'll ever be. You know, and Felt's like, yeah, you know, fuck you, bitch. So, you know, there's there's some stuff going on there. Uh, some of which makes more sense, you know, when you've seen a little bit more of the show as well. But, like, at the same time, it's that the dialogue is just so cringeworthy. Yeah, I and, agree. And so it's like, I think that when you say that like, you feel too old for this show, it's like a case where you and I know that these themes that are genuinely interesting or, or characterization elements that are genuinely interesting, like... We can get those from somewhere else. We have seen other shows that use this plot and these themes. So ultimately, it's like, I respect what the show is trying to do. But the the moment-to-moment -moment experience of it is largely watching very long, 
very cringeworthy conversations, you know? Your point about, you know, uh, 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 it being autistic or, you know, mm -hmm. being very ex explanatory and stuff, I get that reading. Mine is, I think, a simpler one, which is, I just think it's just for people who are younger than me. It's because mm -hmm. of that same reason I feel like uh, you could take this exact same show, everything about it could be exactly the same. You just cut down on the massive amount of explanation going on, like when I've already figured out what's going on long ago, and yeah. it's, it's crystal clear from the narrative. And I don't even know if it was intentional. That's why I said, like, I feel like they're they're awkwardly translating the light novel and feel a need to include yeah. every piece. It feels like that. And I, watching it, it, this is a show that it has something of a unique feel you feel every once in a while. It's because it's so popular, because it, it, people really love it or whatever. And moment to moment, it does feel bad. There are good things, but mostly I feel like it's it's dumb like the IQ level is low because it expects less of me to figure things out that makes me feel like I'm too old See, for like, this I, and I I agree with you that that is sort of the conclusion I'm not saying you're to. dumb if you like it no. at this point I, I yeah. actually think and and this is this might be you know, like high high level of projection here but like same I because I'm writing a light novel myself right now called Kus Omega go read it um, and also subscribe star we have bonus episodes uh ten dollars you get the bonus episode where we review ovas go to the can tent subscribe star in the description and also Link down there below. will be linked my book kus omega which is similar to re-zero in a lot of ways and has a lot of similar themes it was partially inspired by it even you know but like the um the main theme of the series is it's not about being clever it's about moving forward and i think re-zero has an element of like I have to imagine the author is just not that smart, like just not capable of writing good dialogue. And so his his mentality mm -hmm. was like, let's make a story about a character who can't say cool things, who like necessarily sure. is cringe because that's all I can write because I am cringe, me, the author, you know? I get that. I Frankly, I don't want to let him off the hook. And it's not and even not, the writer. Not even to let him off the hook. I just think that, like... Sure, you know, sure. I think it's incorporated into the themes of the story in a way because I've seen a lot of people who love this show who will make mm. the argument that, like, Subaru being a cringe cunt is the point. Like, you have to embrace the fact that he's cringe. And I'm like... It could be the point, and that can still be unenjoyable. We were saying know? that we we don't enjoy cringe in yeah. this kind of way. I mean, this is why th a lot of this is why manga. I talk about this all the time, but like manga is easier. To, if this was a manga, I could consume it probably easier because with anime, it forces you in a block of time. You must sit there and consume for that block of time. Yeah. And if at any moment, because it's enslaved me to its timetable, yeah. if I feel like this information could have been communicated faster or better, then I feel my time being yeah. wasted. The way with a manga, I'm just like, got it, not a problem. Yeah, That's why it's it's yeah. a lot a lot to do with uh, you know, just animation is about timing. Yeah. It's all about like how long each thing lasts. And you know, when you're reading a book, a conversation, you can read it at whatever pace you want, but in your mind, it automatically plays out at the correct speed. You yeah, know? yeah. In anime, it has to play out at the speed of reality unless you are doing something to, you know, shake it up, which is going to be noticeable. It's gonna which be is why there's so many factors that go into that, which is why it's hard. We were talking about, like, the like the morality or the, the, the artistic integrity of watching something at, like, faster, slower speed yeah. that you could get everything right about a show except for those things and it'll be a total nightmare. Galco, one of my favorite shows of all time, more or less, has like 10 minute episodes. If they just made those 20 minutes normal, it would be a zero out of 10 piece of shit because it'd be wasting so much of my fucking time. Uh, so it's it's about, it, it's the artistry involves all these things together. And like, maybe there's a horror anime that's actually too fast. Like, uh, like God like, of High School like is paced so fast. Like we watched, fucking uh, Ninja Collection. Yeah, kinda. Like you, Look well, forward to our Ninja Collection episode coming next. Indeed. Uh, there's, there's, sometimes you might, somebody could, in, in theory, make a horror show and pace it too fast and so it doesn't do the horror moments right, and that's all wrong. So it's not just about being fast or slow, it's about being right for what you're attempting to do. Yeah. And I would argue that the unique problem of this show isn't even that it's paced badly, it's that it simply fills that time with inane dialogue. Too much. That's too much, yeah. I mean, I it, I know this is partially like a Japanese thing as well, because like, this is an insufferable element of most JRPGs to me, it's just like, they want to put as much in it as possible. 
And I think it's because, like, for a lot of people, consuming media is is more about, like, vibing, right? It's like, I'm yeah, going to be yeah. in this world with these characters. And I think that this is one of those shows, like, rewatching the first episode, it really made me appreciate that a big part of why the show is so popular is, like, the big cityscape shots, the big crowd shots, the, like, those are the, all nice, the, yeah. the really multiracial, like, uh, you know, there's, like, all kinds of different... The world. Types of I mean, they haven't fleshed out anything, shit, but there's you know? potential there that I right. appreciate. Well, and it's it just like it's it's more than just looking like a generic fantasy town, because like it does in terms of like he's walking around, and it's all the stuff you would expect to happen. But they bothered to put like a big fountain in the middle of it, and there's bridges yeah. over water. And I would and say there's, like full maps of the city, and you have a sense of where they progressed from the top of the city to the bottom. You that's know, true. Like, through the wide shots. See, so that's, like, that's the love I was talking about. Yeah. And I don't know, there's just, maybe this is maybe in the light novel described exactly like this, but nonetheless, it matters how you interpret it and convert it to anime. Right. There's just one of these annoying conversations that I particularly liked was just I, there's Subaru leaning over a bridge in like a unique pose. And I'm like, some like scene designer and set designer crafted this with love. Yeah. It didn't have, it could have been they stand in the middle of a street and look at each other, shot or shot, boring. Yeah. They, there was love and heart put into it. But then the conversation continues. And it it's like, Jesus on and on Christ, and on shut and the on. fuck up. <laughs> just sum it up and move along. Because, and, and this is again, where I, I feel too old for it. Cause like, I get that they're going for, this is the emotional conversation. These are the jokes. Yeah. I did not laugh at one joke and I did not emote one time. No. No. I don't think these entire four well, episodes. And that's, that's where I come back to the vibe thing. Cause it's like, for some, like I could vibe with the artwork. I could vibe with the character designs look great. Uh, good music. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good soundtrack. Um, I even think the show is like, like you said, the biggest problem is it's a light novel adaptation. It naturally is going to have to be a bunch of fucking conversations. Very unfortunate. The director does a good job with the material. It's like, yeah, I yeah. can't really imagine a way that this show could have been done any better. So just like, cut cut lines. Yeah, cut lines. Other than That's the way literally to do it. removing Have an editor who's there to tell you when you're wasting the audience's time yeah. and cut. But the, I think the bottom line is that if the show was like that, it would not be the same. It wouldn't be a it show. It might be for, less popular because people would yeah. be like, this is too complicated for me too to fast which, to again, fucking... I, I phrase that insultingly, but that yeah. might legitimately be true. Because it is for like a young audience, and now right. we're old and dying. And, so well, even more than just the speed or, or the, you know, being older, like I do think there are some people who just don't like shows to move too fast for them. Like God of High School, we've seen get a lot of shit, and I think that for a lot of people, it just feels probably too hyperactive. Like, they can't form enough connection with it because it's just stuff happening all the time, yeah, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, this show is... Because it is slower and the characters have conversations, it feels like there's more to it. Because you literally see the character for longer. You, you feel like, oh, I'm having a conversation with this character. I'm getting to know them. But it's like, their personalities are just so boring. Like... None of the characters is interesting. None of them is anyone I'd ever want to have a conversation with or hang out with. And I know that for like a lot of otaku, it's just like, oh, well, they're hot, right? Like you don't want to hang out with hot chicks. It's like, not if they're boring. Not, not if, if we're not fucking. That's like, why I don't watch fairy tale. Cause I yeah. need much, much, much more than that to yeah. spend time watching a show, let alone reading a manga. And it's, and it's not even that I think these characters are, it's neither that they're bad characters nor that they're bad people. I mean, part of the exploration is like, no, some of them are good people. Some of them are like empathetic. And I, I, it's not, I, I guess I should say, I don't care about them, but I understand. They have not succeeded in the task of getting us to care. It's not yeah. our job right. to go in loving their characters. It's exactly. their job to make us Well, and, and I think the show kind of comments on that in a way, because Subaru mm. himself is somebody who, like, this will come up even more in later episodes. It kind of is part of his arc, is that, like, yeah, nobody has time for this guy. Like, he yeah, has to solve yeah. these problems because everybody else has bigger shit to do, and it's not their fault that he is fucking a weak little bitch who has no idea what's going on, you know? He has to learn. He has to go through the trouble of figuring shit out. But, you know, there are people who are willing to help. They just don't... Yeah, nobody yeah. can commit the amount of time to help him the amount that he needs. And that's kind of why I was like, I wonder if the author is, like kind of slow himself and that's why the story moves so slow because he's somebody who takes this long to figure things out and what this a circuitous long backhand the against the author <laughs> of re-zero but i'm with you low iq writing no yeah. doubt about it I, I mean i respect it i respect that and it, it could even be that he, he's just making the character that way and that because i mean the story is more complex than that and other characters do come off 
as more intelligent, but it's also like they just have more serious conversations, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. the scene where the the knight is fighting the 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 disembowel the bowel hunter. The bowel hunter. Like their back and forth was not nearly as cringy as hers with the guy because it seemed like they were characters who like are talking about something that they both understand. They're like trading like they're talking about the fight you know they're talking about yeah, like how powerful yeah. one another are their techniques like th th see that that's tangible yeah. that's substantive to what's going on in the scene it's not these kind of like vague platitudes about anime tropes that like we already generally understand yeah. the way that like subaru is clearly like falling for emilia i've seen it a thousand times i understand he's nice he like he's a he's a loser guy but he's got lots of guts he has that yeah. to offer Determined. is there anything wrong with that premise no which is why i can understand why people like this I, we were saying before or I, I was saying i think this is like an excellent like it's your entry to your mid-level experience of anime like you've seen a couple of shonen maybe you watch you know like uh, some stuff on adult swim if that still exists or whatever and now you're ready to kick it up a notch and you're gonna you're gonna open up the world wide web and go to aol.com and google how watch anime online and you're gonna see whoa people like this re-zero thing let's check it out and you will say as in your young life, as I experienced myself, like, whoa, this is getting a little deeper than like the stuff right. that I'm used to. I can vibe with that. And that's fine. Those things need to exist. And of course, those things are likely to be more popular and hit that target demographic harder. So when all, so I, as you were saying, I don't think it's bad. And even as we were watching, I was saying there really is heart here and a lot to appreciate about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I feel myself as just a bit beyond that middling experience. I've experienced this kind of story in many different ways now, right. and it's not particularly impressive in any of them. So well, I'm, I'll be curious to see if the show changes your mind at all. Because, yeah, yeah like, I'm hoping that, that, I, that I it expands say, more as it goes. But I think that we'll like see. this is a show that it very much for me oscillates back and forth between like having interesting ideas, but the way that it gets to those interesting ideas is by way of like just the most generic anime scenario. That's a problem you know? because like, I guarantee I've read or seen yeah. things with better sci-fi or fantasy concepts than mm -hmm. this. The way you make a story good is you present them in an enjoyable right. and interesting way. Will it do that? That's it's, the question. It's kind of like with, with the first arc, there's the whole, he walks down the alleyway and he's like getting robbed, right? Yeah. And the first time they do it, they play it completely straight. Mm. It's a scene you've seen in pretty much any isekai guy goes down random alleyway something bad's happening it's it's just writing 101 yeah. for character in a place they don't know anybody what do i make them do you know um but like then uh, you know of course the 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 rub is we're going to go through the time loop a few times we're going to experience this moment a few different ways ultimately each one is kind of just another cliche like it's just like another yeah, way this yeah. could have gone if it had been in a different show it, it's it's not so much like we totally redefine the scenario and our whole fucking view of it is different it's more like alternate version that allows the story to progress but it's still at the core it's still that generic isekai See, scene this you know? is my fear this is my fear that this is going to turn out because i haven't seen more than what we were talking about right now my fear is that it's playing with these meta elements but really at the end of the day what this show has as its claim to fame is it's just like it's an isekai that is, it is aware of its own meta context a little bit, and it's willing to go a bit edgier than normal. And all of this rigmarole is really, at the end of the day, just to sell you an edgier show than you usually get. And like, that's the distinguishing feature. Because I like, when it comes to, to like isekais that do something new and are creative, like I've got, I've got, uh, what's the fucking one? Kuso, Kana, Konosuba. Konosuba. Konosuba's right there. And I could be watching Konosuba instead of this. And so far, I've been given no reason to watch this over Konosuba. Uh, and it, maybe a comedy works better for that vehicle rather than a dramatic vehicle like this show. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, honest, it's hard to drama good, honestly. And it's hard to drama know. good. It, it is. Do you have any other notes you want to go through? Uh, no, not really. I guess I just uh, wanted to comment again that I really did think that the animation and fights were really good. They just need to get out of their own way with over-explaining yeah, shit. Because I, I really enjoyed a lot of that stuff. With the animation Surprisingly and fights, so. I like... I like the animation itself. The choreography is... I'm impressed that it's comprehensible. I'll say that. Like, with anime... That's an impressive feat. With anime, honestly, like, making a fight that looks good and you can tell what's happening, 
not the easiest. There are obviously These shows feel grounded where, in their environments, yes. which was good. It's just a matter of like because of the fact that it's basically like a character just kind of standing in place shooting icicles at another one who's running around doing all kinds of crazy shit. Like, yeah. there's not like a sense of. I guess there's not that push and pull you want in a good fight of like, ooh, ooh, who's going to win? They were who's short. Lose, I liked better know? than that. The big guy with the club fighting against yeah. the girl. I thought those were, were more Some impressive. Some weight on that one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely, there's enough to like about this show. I've become, you know, more patient and softer over the years since I watched this for the first time. Mm. So I was kind of going into it more looking at it like, all right, I know people like this, you know, let's figure out what's good about it. And... I feel like there I explained things. the there things that things. were good. It's not that there's anything bad. Like, that's that's the thing about the show. It's like, it's not that there's anything that I can point to and say, like, that ruined it for me. It's just, like, there's too much. There's too much of Subaru being this character and hanging out with these other characters and just kind of drably hanging around. It reminds me of, to some extent, Higurashi, I guess, because in that mm. show it was always like the start of an arc is just the characters all hanging out and then all kinds of crazy fucking violent shit happens, you know? But with that show, I just felt like the characters had more chemistry together where like, and it was about exploring the chemistry of the same characters over and over throughout the show. ReZero, it's just like, I mean, he's just an awkward fuck, you know? Like, that is all of his he interactions sure are he's an he awkward sure fuck and other people react to it and go like, what the fuck is this guy? Is like, is he all right, you know? I'm waiting for a character to really care about. And, you know, I know later on that there are characters that people feel an emotional connection with. That could be me. That could be me. That might work on me. But... I think it'll be Battle Goose, but we'll see. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Hey, that's all I got. That's all I got for the first four episodes. Make sure you go to the subscribe star for Cantant. We're going to cover all of ReZero all the way up leading into season three starting in January. Bonus episodes for $10 backers on that subscribe star that will be available probably when you see this. So keep your yep. eyes fucking peeled. Sundays and Thursdays, Sundays and Thursdays, Sundays and Thursdays right here on Cantant. Cantant. See you soon, everybody. Bye.